Good morning and welcome to uh, Pixilab. My name is Fredrik Svanberg and I will give you a uh, introduction to Pixilab Blocks. Blocks is a software that allows you to create uh, uh, exciting experiences for for uh, cultural and corporate installations. And the typical applications include museums, uh, visitor centers, exhibitions, uh, corporate showrooms, but it's also a great solution for presentation in live events and trade shows where you want to have full control and, and interaction with your audience, your visitors and your customers. But you also might want to involve your, your own staff, your salespeople, change different presentations, they want to do control dis displays, and I'm going to give you a few examples on how you can accomplish this in a moment. Um, but first I want to explain how Blocks works. Uh, so the Blocks software runs on a server, and that is actually the only place where media content is stored. Then we have the points of interest, and they're called spots. And a display spot can be any size screen with a web browser or HTML support. Then you connect the spots to the server via standard wired or wireless network. Add the screens, LEDs, projection, smart screens with built-in players, small wireless tablets and touch screens, mobile devices. Everything is connected in the same way. You can connect lights, sound systems and buttons and sensors to, to control your installation. So when I, um, when I push this uh, button, I actually send a control signal to the server and then back out to turn on the light. And that is really how everything in Blocks works. Everything is connected and all the control signals go back to the server and then control the screens. If you don't have a smart screen, with a built-in player, you can use any PC as your, um, as your Pixilab player. And that PC does not need to run Windows or any other operating sy for the system for that matter. It doesn't even need a hard drive. It's a streaming box. It's, uh, it's uh, like your Chromecast or Apple TV at home. Uh, means that you can also include bright sign players and everything else with, with HTML support. When you build systems like this, you traditionally have to have a control system and maybe a separate signage system and special solution for, for interactivity and mobile, mobile devices. Blocks integrates all that in one system, display, control and interact. So let's um, take a look at the first main feature of Blocks, which is display. You all know what digital signage is. And signage is, or display management, as we would like to call it, is certainly one of the features is blocks. But we have a slightly higher ambition with, uh, with, um, with our definition of signage because we also want to control the content and the screen where they're playback on. So if I bring up the, the control, the editor of blocks, you see that this is again just a web page that connects to the server. And, uh, and you see here I have my spots, my points of interest are here. You can organize spots inside groups. You can have, you see that I have also a location spot here for my tulips over there that I will uh, show you in a, in a moment. Uh, but every spot has an assigned block, and block is media. So every media element is stored in a container that we refer to as a block. And a block can be a simple image or a video, but it can also be web content, HTML, it can be a playlist, it can be a composition. But if I want to do something really simple, I open up my spot group here. I want to put something on the center screen back there. Uh, so I find a small, yeah, I have a video here. And now that video is streaming from the server, just like that. Beside, uh, next to the video block, I have a slightly more advanced tag selector block, and tag is a very powerful concept in block. It helps you to select languages and set the uh, resolution or the orientation of your screens and many other parameters in the system. So you see, I have content here for my left screen and for my center screen and even for my touch screen. All of it is here inside, inside the tag selector. So if I go out of my spot group, I drag my tag selector block onto the spot group, not to the individual screen. I change all my content. I have a video 
playing on my center screen, a slideshow on the left one there. I even had some coffee beans on the behind the logo there on the LED screen. I, as you can see, I also have my vertical coffee menu here because the tag selector knows that this screen is portrait and it knows that those are landscape. Um, we can also synchronize videos across multiple screens. In this case, I just run two videos on two screens, but it's a network, so you can have as many screens as you want synchronized over the network. If you want to do frame accurate sync, you can do one player with multiple outputs. If you have a LED application with multiple processors, for example. Um, but let me show you what I refer to as the display management. So I brought up this control panel here. And as you can see, I can select my different screens. So I take the center screen and I want to play the first video there. And, and that's the same as, as I when, uh, when I was dragging the block over to the spot. It's exactly the same thing, but uh, now I'm doing it from the interface. So I want to change to another video. To immediately change that with the transition that you can set, depending on what you want to do. You can also control the video. I want to pause the video there because I want to speak about something here. I want to continue playing the video. You can also control a lot of parameters like volume, opacity, rotation, and scaling of every media element that you have here because I mean this can be a huge lead wall or a big projection or something and you might have lots of different elements on the screen that you want to control independently. This we do all of that in real time. And now I want to um, show you how you can use dynamic media. And with dynamic media, I mean uh, media that is currently not on the server. Because so far, I've only showed you examples of how quick you can manipulate and control the content that is on the server. So I'm going to take a picture of you. So big smile now. This is interesting stuff, right? Yeah, very good. And I think you allowed me to use this content and publish it. So I'm going to bring this image up here. And I know uh, Luis here, he thinks this is very nice, and uh, so we published this image. Uh, uh, I mean, first of all, I mean, what, what I'm doing here, I'm not doing this uh, image transition to impress you, uh, because this is quite simple stuff, really, for a good programmer to, uh, to do something like this. But these are typical functions that are built into blocks. I mean, this is a good example of what you can do with dynamic media. Think about what I'm doing. I'm taking a picture or a movie with my phone. I download that to the server wirelessly. You see how quick it goes. It shows up here. You can draw on it, add some graphics. It's stored again on the server and displayed over here. And why can you do that? I mean, yeah, you can do it because we're all connected on the network to, to the block server. And the fact that this is a web browser. This is a web browser. And that's also a web browser. They're all the same. Web browsers are good in showing media and interacting with them. And you have cameras, of course, built into your phones. You have touch and gestures and all these good things. Another type of dynamic content is, of course, live video. I think I have a PowerPoint presentation somewhere here. Yes, I have a three-slide PowerPoint presentation. So now I run PowerPoint here on my laptop. And this is now going through a capture card directly to, to, to this specific spot. And I tap, tap. And you see this is happening in real time, no latency, no delay, just like that, capture. I also have a network feed on the other screen, and I can use a fader, of course, for that. And there I have a, I have a small network camera here, so don't worry about the quality of that video. Quality can be great. And, and uh, as you could see, this, is, this has a little bit of delay, about half a second, maybe 0 0.3 in the best conditions. So it's not uh, appropriate for lip sync applications. It's, it's, it's too much delay for that. But I still consider that as a low latency network solution. I mean, think that you have a camera inside a conference, and then you have breakout rooms where you want to display this content over the network. The great thing here is, of course, that you don't have a cable to a capture card. That's on the network. So you can stream it and display it wherever you want. So a very good solution for that. The next... Uh, main feature block is control. And you see me that I, I, I control a lot of things here from my phone, but blocks is not, uh, I mean, it's not just a remote control for the signage. It, it's a real control system, just like Crestron or Medialon. Or, and and uh, you, can, you can approach um, 
the control in blocks on three different levels. You can start with something uh, very simple that we described, that you can connect a function directly to a button or a slider. So if I put uh, cl uh, click on that one, you see I play the video with the cuckoo bird there. If I move this slider, I'm going to move my spotlight to locate the uh, cuckoo's nest up here. And when I click the cuckoo out, the bird comes out. I mean, three very different things. I mean, streaming a video, uh, doing an analog movement, and controlling an I.O. function. But they all work exactly the same. They're just... Uh, direct linking of functions in, in, in blocks like this. The second level of control we call task. And the task is a sequence. I pressed my reset task, so I reset everything there, and then we take a look at the run task. And it's very good to have a sequence that when you want to time something, or maybe when you control 15 things at the same time. So, but this is doing exactly the same thing as my button. So the first one here is the center screen, cuckoo video, yeah, wait one second and then move the light and wait to um, do the same thing. And the nice thing with the tasks in block is that you need to understand a bit of programming logic, but you don't really need to be a real programmer because you get a lot of help with the commands, drop-down menus, and, uh, and things like that. So if I play this run task, video is there, one second, lamp, one second, and then the bird. So the same thing. And then the uh, third level of control is more advanced and we call it scripting. And the reason why we bring this up is that with traditional control and signage system, they typically have their own proprietary, rather complex ways of programming. And we try to be completely the opposite. We try to be simple in what we do in blocks and then powerful with tools that already exist. I mean, for example, if you're a game developer or a computer graphics artist, you know what Unity is. If you're a real programmer, you can code, you can program JavaScript. If you're a web designer, you know you're very familiar with HTML and CSS. Those are very powerful tools, and, and, and the knowledge is, is well spread. And we don't want to make something or try to create something that is half as good as any of those. We want to incorporate and bring them in instead. And because, and I'm going to give you an example here, because the User interface design is, of course, a vital component of every control system. And I bring up my raw panel again. And as you can see, well, this is just a composition with some control buttons and uh, some text. And certainly I can add uh, like a background image from my hair. And you see that the panel is updating immediately. And yeah, my Cuckoo video button, yeah, it works. But it's just white and blue. That is how it looks in blocks when you don't do any design. So, yeah, you can test all the functions, you can add graphics or layers or whatever you want to do. But now when I swipe here, I apply CSS. I mean, not a very dramatic change, but you see now the buttons look more elegant. They, they animate. When I click here, you see there's an animation of the button. Very simple to apply. Exactly the same control elements, just apply the CSS. So if you know CSS or web design, you can create magic with your user interface. Exactly the same functions there. But there are, of course, things that you cannot do in blocks and should not do in blocks, like real game programming. Uh, we created this HTML project where we call it the color mixer. And you see that the lamps now are red. And if I press the green one, I start to mix colors here. And then when I mix them all away, they will all turn green if I wash out the red here. So, so as I said, this is an HTML project, and the playback here is just a web page. So that is not so amazing in itself, but as you could see, it's all connected to all the console. So our message with this is use the right tool for the job, for your interactive application, and then bring it in and incorporate it into the blocks infrastructure. That's our message. And finally, um, interaction. A lot of possibilities, of course, with uh, interaction. And um, I will start with something perhaps not so exciting, but very useful. Uh, it's a um, information in interactive kiosk. You see it, airports, museums, everywhere. You, you click on something, you get some information, you get a video playing, you can select language thanks to the tags in blocks. When the video comes to the end, it maybe goes back to the first page. 
again, uh, not rocket science, but very useful. And again, features, all of this is built in as standard functions in blocks. And it's so easy to add 10 of them or 200 of them on the network, and they just work. But not all our screens are fixed. We also have a, m a lot of mobile devices around us these days, and they can be used for a lot of, lot of things in exhibitions and uh, in other installations. So for example, here I, I have a small mobile device, a small Android device, which is actually a barcode scanner that I can use for scanning QR codes. So I just select the language down here, and uh, then I walk up to my screen. And as you can see, there's a barcode there, or a QR code. I press that. So the, the video on that spot is streaming from the server. The audio is also on the server, streaming over the wireless network in perfect sync. And you are there. <laughs> That's good. You can do that as well. And of course, as you can see, I have my keyboard here as well. So the, bar, the, the QR code is just a number. I mean, you understand that part. So you can choose a number or a QR code, just help you to enter it. I have another Q, QR code over here at the tulips. Tulips are and then it gives me another sound file and another picture or another video or a sign language or whatever you want to display on the phone. I mean, this is just a synchronized streaming. Again, the phone is not much different from that big screen. They're both web browsers. When you, when you uh, scan the, the code, then you also know where your visitors are because you know that they've scanned that code, they're there. And that can be interesting in itself, to know where people are. So, and there are many different techniques to do that. I have a uh, touch-sensitive mat here, so I can click on those small red dots there where I have my sensors below the mat. And you see, every time I step here, it adds a number. That can, of course, be used for statistics, but it can also be used for triggering something. Maybe you have 100 people enter the room, then something should happen. Sensors is one thing, QR codes is one thing, but you can also use beacons, or you can use indoor positioning system, or if you're outdoors, you can use GPS to know where people are, bring it into blocks. Um, the next step, who are you? When I entered this exhibition, I entered my name, I'm Frederick, and my language preferences perhaps, so when I walk over here with my NFC tag, yes, and it's now I'm here. People, I remember you. Oh, really? Let's check that out, if that is true. So I come up here to the touch panel. I can select a color. Oh, nice. I select the blue color, and I go back to my NFC station here. So I get a welcome message, welcome back message, and a blue flower. I go back here, and I pick the yellow one instead. Now I get a yellow flower and the same message. I mean, you understand the point. You can define where you are who you are, and then you can start to, to present your exhibition depending on your preferences in your tags, or co even collect tags. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities with this. And of course, the audience, the people in our exhibitions is perhaps the most important thing, but we also have other things. We have objects, we have artwork, we have uh, paintings and things that we want to present. And over here, I just have this block with a with a blue and red dot here, so if I put it down with a red dot, it gives me red animation, and all my, <coughs> my Philips wireless lamps turn red. I change the side of it, because this block has two NFC tags built in, that they are so accurate, you can build up, oops, <laughs> sorry, a cube or something like that, and I put down it with the blue, I get a blue animation, and my Philips lamps turns blue. Okay? The, <laughs> the, uh, the Pixilab P over here, the small nice sculpture, is uh, painted with conductive paint, so and then c just connected to a to a digital input. So I need to just need to touch that briefly like that, and it triggers an automation. You can of course paint your walls with something, paint a hand here that you can touch, and then things can happen. So they are just different examples of how easy it is to connect with that. So after a presentation like this, I'm. Uh, quite thirsty, so I put down my, my water bottle, and when I lift it up, I get <coughs> those bubbles. And the idea here is the uh, same technology, it's still an NFC tag at the uh, bottom of my bottle, but a different behavior depending on if I place an object or if I lift it up, which of course can also be very nice to use. So, blocks is... Um, is an all-in-one system. 
that truly combines display, control and interactive functions into one system in a way that has not been seen before. And uh, we connect to completely standard hardware, making the installation as cost effective as it possibly can with the players and everything else that we connect is completely standard. We allow you to use uh, standard production methods to bring your content in. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed this uh, short presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, we're here, of course. Otherwise, I wish you a very nice day here at the IEC. Thank you.